Hey there, welcome back. Uh, this will be the rotor assembly uh, overview, if you will, part two. We'll continue with our um, coverage of this rotor assembly and wrap that up in this video. So that'll be two parts, part one, part two. And um, without further delay, let's go. We are looking at the most, uh, the most prestigious part of this project. That being uh, an official autograph from Agent Jay-Z himself after balancing this uh, rotating assembly. And I um, am proud to know that that's going to be on that engine. I asked him to do that and I didn't think he would, but he did. So thank you, Jay. Appreciate that. That'll be, um, I don't know, that's like a signature to a piece of artwork. All right. That artwork being your um, skills involved in messing with this old, old thing that most people I don't think would want to mess with. Alright, well, let's uh, move on to some other stuff. Thanks again, Jay. Appreciate it. And we will um, always remember this. This is forever uh, going to be preserved, I hope. Alright, uh, the blue tape, the masking tape, um, I placed over um, an initial. He had uh, signed it J and an initial and I thought well maybe he doesn't want that to get out so I just blanked out his initial. Uh, J if that's okay I wasn't going to just tell. Maybe it doesn't matter. But maybe it does. Alright so anyway that's what the blue tape's about. Alright so I am uh, honored to have this ability hopefully to uh, have this shaft in this engine running and rotating and all the time when you see this engine running it's you know that uh, agent Jay-Z's autograph is going to be spinning around there at at least um, I don't know 5200 rpm or so maybe 5500 at idle and it's going to be spinning up to uh, hopefully one day over 15,000 near full power however um, old this engine is I may not really want to be running that fast very often but hey it's balanced so it should be good okay all right we're about to wrap this up all right let's jump back let's do a little last infomercial here on the turbine turbine wheel Okay, uh, just to answer questions before they're asked, uh, these numbers written down here in Sharpie marker and this zero or reference point, that was done by me to keep double, triple, extra, triple, quad, a whole bunch of extra care that those um, turbine fasteners, that the turbine bolts don't get mixed up. They have to go. So on top of Jay's original installation I marked each one and I just indexed it. This is where the dowel locator pin is on the other side which matches with our which matches with our uh, which will match with the little hole here in this flange okay. Once I established that I went clockwise 1 through 10 all the way around so number 1, 2, 3 all the way and so forth. Alright here's 10. I then numbered all the bolt heads so if you take this bolt head, 5, and it says 5, and then it says 5, so I go 5. I bet that bolt goes here, 5. Alright, so bolt, 5. And on, and so forth. So I don't get mixed up. It'll be an easy way to reassemble it and not be goofed up. Of course, I also wrote down those weights. But it doesn't matter. Those bolt dash numbers... Uh, you know, he could have ground on one of those bolt heads to create a weight that's in between two weights that I didn't have. You know what? That bolt has to go where it goes. So, you know what? You just number it and go with the system. Alright, there's the turbine wheel assembly and some of um, the precautions and possible annoyances of messing with it. But you know what? In the long run, hopefully it'll make noise and power and it'll be cool. All right, uh, just an, another added so what. Uh, this is called the, uh, the turbine stub shaft, and obviously it's stubby. 
this uh, shaft is what fits into the inner race of the turbine bearing that you saw in the exhaust nozzle assembly. So that is where this piece, or this end of the shaft, I should say, this, because this wheel being bolted to that shaft makes an assembly. So the aft end, or the exhaust end of this rotating assembly, is all supported right here on this uh, stub which fits into the bearing that you saw in my uh, exhaust nozzle assembly uh, video set. Uh, also, let's just move on around here. Past that famous signature, thank you Jay, to the front. And here we have a stub shaft, I guess you call it. This uh, smooth surface here is where the compressor bearing inner race fits. And then there's a, a spacer or two that fit between that bearing race and this uh, flange right here, this face. That determines the engine clearance. And that's what I was referring to in the past videos about adjusting clearances by changing the thickness of this spacer. There's a, a big nut, spanner nut, that threads on here. It's a left-hand thread. So you spin it, so you spin it counterclockwise to tighten it and clockwise loosens it okay that keeps it I guess from coming a lo coming loose on its own but on top of that it has a locking ring it has these little grooves here that the locking ring engages and then there's a keeper a spring-loaded keeper so I don't think there's any way in heck that that would ever come loose inside here we have a spline drive female uh, so for the short shaft that goes from it couples this uh, compressor shaft stub shaft to the accessory drive housing so it's a very simple way you have a short you know shaft to fit from here to a similar spline drive on the accessory housing well that pretty much comprises all of the j44 rotating assembly from compressor to back shaft or from the compressor to the shaft to the turbine wheel. Simple engines for simple minds. Great beginning engine. So, like I said, I'm just tickled to be able to play with this. And at the same time, in awe of you guys and gals that uh, rebuild the airliner engines with their millions of pieces parts. Awesome. Okay. Well, I guess we'll uh, kind of wrap this up. It's about time. Well, there you go. Uh, try to make it as one video uh, to cover basically what's already assembled minus this one wheel with 10 screws and 10 nuts. Um, but like I said, that'll almost be toward the very end of reassembly of the major part of the engine. It'll be toward the last step uh, because everything else has to go first. You start at the front end and build it up or back however you want to look at it, it's just the way it is. So, okay, uh, we'll stop this and then um, I gotta get, there's a couple other things I can do here. I know that I'm excited to see how this clearance is gonna be between uh, our blades here of the compressor rotor versus the intake housing. And then of course, I'm also gonna have um, clearances back here to look at with the turbine blades being close to the uh, being close to the stator or nozzle and the turbine shroud tip clearance uh, tip clearance won't change of course with this shim so I you know we know that that is a, an axial clearance and that you're just looking at the clearance between the blade in relation to the, the blade tips in relation to the turbine shroud the only way that could be changed is by a different rotor assembly but the axial shifting of the rotor shaft which is controlled by the spacer mentioned earlier in this video behind the front compressor the compressor bearing will affect clearance for the front and the clearance between the turbine blades and the turbines nozzle okay nozzles veins that's uh, got to also be checked so uh, I believe though, before you can really do anything, you have to get this bearing assembly together and then you have to have technically the exhaust nozzle assembly with that bearing 
with the turbine bearing in holding the end of this shaft precisely where it's going to be set when it's, the engine's assembled. And that will hold the shaft in relation to the case which will hold this rotor in relation to the intake housing. Uh, if I try to set this down in the intake housing, if you remember those bearings are self-aligning bearings and that would allow the shaft to pivot and tilt. Of course, if you tilt it, you're going to have one side much closer to the intake housing while the opposite side will be farther away. So we understand this. There's no playing like that. You really just have to put this in and bolt it together and check it. And if it's off, you figure out how much it's off and then you figure out what you got to do to change the shim or the to change the spacer. To change the clearance, we have to change the spacer. And by that, we'd have, we'd have to pull the front, uh, the front bearing out, remove the sh the uh, space, remove the spacer, install a new spacer of the correct thickness, reinstall the bearing, and then put the nut spanner nut back on and the cover, to lock everything down, and then uh, recheck. Uh, the engine will be assembled, and basically, you shouldn't have to disassemble the entire engine back to individual pieces. Well, anyway, I appreciate everyone's interest and uh, video viewership, and especially you subscribers um, to be watching this. Like I said, it's not just a bunch of fire and excitement. It's kind of a dull, boring process, but unless you're a jet engine guy or just a general gearhead or uh, you watch gears on uh, Saturday mornings, on um, velocity, you know, things like that. I just like shows like that. I get a kick out of performance parts. Um, this is, I guess, a performance engine in my opinion. At least it is here in, uh, in my experience. Okay, well, I appreciate you watching. Thanks again, and uh, by the way, you know, happy 150 years uh, celebration there for uh, old Canada, our northern neighbor. Congratulations, that's good. Uh, hopefully 150 more. Well, thank you. I appreciate your time. Have a good one. See you next time.